morning. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so the CPC, those of you who um, found it in your um, hearts to vote for Progressive Democrats of America, I'm here tonight to thank you on behalf of 70,000 Progressive Democrats who still believe that we can get single payer yeah. and that we can get yeah. ourselves in 2014 and get ourselves out of Afghanistan to work with our lead and get that $51 billion back to work. Uh, this has been a long struggle for uh, progressive Democrats of America, and uh, with what short time I have, it's uh, just our luck to follow the comedian in one of the best speeches tonight. But I will um, just be short. I just want to share one anecdotal story with you, and again, thank all of you, all the fellow awardees, those of you on the immigration fight, see, say, play, they, we will win. But uh, this odyssey for us began, for me in 1980, as uh, Keith indicated, I was living in the progressive bastion of Orange County, California, <laughs> and had the good fortune of Bob Dornan um, as my Congress member, B1 Bob. And at that time, I was living in the Catholic worker community, and if you can remember, those of you who can remember that far back in 1980, uh, the one person probably most responsible to put us where we are today, Ronald Reagan, had just been elected president and had informed us that we could wage fight and win a nuclear war and that he was going to commit $1.5 trillion of our resources to do just that. And we began a vigil out in Orange County, uh, behind the Orange Curtain following the election, uh, right after Reagan was sworn in. Uh, we began assembling at the Rockwell uh, assembly plant, where at that time they were building first strike nuclear weapons for the MX missile. And when we leafleted there, the workers would look at us and say, are you nuts? Uh, we just uh, elected a president that's going to bring up $1.5 billion, $1.5 trillion budget for us. And we said, well, we're here and we're going to stand our ground. And following a few arrests, one, two, maybe 24, uh, one day when we were sitting in jail, uh, Father Berrigan said, we're not making a lot of traction here. And uh, we pretty much agreed with that and uh, decided that we should send somebody off to Washington and see if anybody was awake at the uh, halls of Congress. And as a young idealist at 22, I was given the short straw to walk the halls of Congress, uh, not with much prior knowledge, but simply with the message that it was time to redirect military spending to meet human needs. And as I walked the halls of Congress and leafleted, uh, as Thomas Paine had taught me, uh, there was one person at one time finally who leaned over to me and said, come with me, young man. And I had no idea who he was. And as we made our way to the, um, I can't remember which office building at that time, but when we got there, I broke to the right assuming we were going to go to the staff side, and we broke to the left. And I saw the nameplate that said John Conyers. And he said, <laughs> he said to me, what do you have there, young man? And I said, it's a leaflet, and I think it's time that somebody out here in Washington stand up against his president and the armaments that he wants to build in this country. And he said, have a seat. And he got on the phone, and a couple of minutes later, he assembled, and he said, Tim, I'd like you to meet Ron Dellums, George Crockett and Harold Washington. And they said, go back home and know that we're fighting the good fight and build a movement both inside and outside these halls of Congress so we can withstand this onslaught of the Reagan administration. And with that in mind, I fast forward to 2004, following the presidential campaigns when we met in Boston, many of us, at the National Convention, when we never got the debate that we wanted on those issues that were united us as progressives. And 1,000 progressive Democrats gathered at Roxbury Community College in the belief that a small, dedicated group of people working both inside and outside the Democratic Party could bring about real change. And so tonight, you uh, are witness to that, and I thank you uh, for being a part of that. I want to acknowledge, if I could, and I know there's a few more speeches behind me, um, and as Mo Yudal used to say, everything's been said, but not everything's been said. Um, or said by whom? Um, I want to thank those members of Congress who were early on who stood with PDA. Congressman Conyers, who was there before there was PDA, and who's been there from day one. Congresswoman Barbara Lee, who stood with us at Roxbury. Never waited when you're coming to PDA. Has always been there with us in our very doctor. Raul Grijalva from my home state of Arizona. Oh, yeah. Shiva Govern, who's not here tonight, who's waged probably the most courageous fight against our party leadership. Where was our party when the assault began on food stamps? Why did it take Jim McGovern to take the lead of the CPC? Where was our party at that effort? And I thank Jim McGovern 
for being with PDA and being part of that fight and that struggle. I just want to thank you as part of our advisory board. The newest member of our advisory board, many of you saw the letter, arrived just in time today, and we are honored that Keith Ellison is now joining the PDA. Other board members who are in the room, uh, Jim Hightower probably snuck out over to the bar. I want to thank Jim, America's number one agitator, who's also on our National Advisory Board. Steve Cobble, who you heard earlier, my friend from Reverend Jackson's campaign, serves on our National Advisory Board. And I want to take a minute to acknowledge, as I said, those who stood with us in the fight for single payer from day one. And that's the nurses. Who better than the nurses? To make the fight yeah. And I want to, there's a sense of urgency when it comes to talking about health care. And my message to you on behalf of those 70,000 activists who every month, it's great when we mobilize once a year or twice a year when we visit 100 or 150 congressional offices. But I want to let you know, those of you not in the room, that for the last 12 months, Progressive Democrats of America have been dedicated themselves, organizationally working both inside and outside Washington, to deliver letters to members of Congress in their district offices every month on these issues. I invite all of you, as we heard earlier, let's get out of our silos and deliver those letters to 435 congressional offices. Please join us in that effort. And finally, through the work of Raul Grijalva and his staff and others, we've established what we call a round table. For the first time in Washington, progressive activists are coming together not to just hear sound bites, not just to take photo ops, but to really sit down and carve out strategy on how we can work together. And the two fellow travelers that have been part of that effort, in addition to the folks I've already introduced, are Mark Pokiad and Alan Grayson. And we thank you for being part of that. <laughs> Healthcare Not Warfare is not just a bumper sticker. It should be a program for all of us to work from. And as I said, I have a sense of urgency now in working on the healthcare front. So uh, any assistance and help, as uh, Keith indicated, uh, we should have never caved on single payer. We should never allow the debate on public option. We as the CPC should have felt strong. And I hope this is in every day to us to do that. I want to close by acknowledging, and I do have two favorites in the audience tonight, two of my closest companions who were with me earlier this week when we discussed coming out here to get this award, and I had a, uh, an overnight at our local uh, hospital. And I wasn't sure whether I'd get here tonight. But we made it on the train tonight, and we often say, where's that youth, where's that next generation? Well, I brought them with us, and I want you to please just to acknowledge both Sheila and Julia. Thank them for being here tonight. Yeah. Yeah.